Welcome to this video, Fetching with URL Lib 2 and APIs. Okay, so this is going to seem counterintuitive because, yes, this is a course in web scraping. Since you were kind enough to watch this far, I'm going to actually let you in on a bit of a secret, which is that web scraping can be a pain, and it can often be an unnecessary one. Part of the problem is that when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So as soon as people learn to web scrape, I'll often see them write web scrapers to do things like clumsily get movie reviews or weather data or other information that is readily available through other means, particularly through APIs. So in this section, I want to talk exactly about what an API is, and then I want to cover some background information that's going to help us use an API, and then I want to go through a few examples. So let's start with this video bypassing the browser. So in this video, we're going to talk about things to look for before deciding to write a web scraper. It's important to consider alternatives like using APIs or simply doing your due diligence to ensure that there isn't an easier method available to you. API stands for Application Program Interface. When people want to create doors for programmers to make requests for data or to use their tools, they'll create an API and usually they'll document it quite well. So using APIs, you can bypass the browser and the HTML while still getting all the information that you want. This is very helpful because websites evolve constantly, right? And they're always changing their HTML. So if you're writing code that's meant to refetch data from the same website, it's very important to make sure that there isn't an API available to you before you start to go down the rabbit hole of web scraping. So as I said, because websites change their HTML frequently, uh, web scraping can be fragile. So I strongly suggest that you make sure you do your research and ensure that there aren't any alternative solutions or easier ways to get the data that you want before you begin writing what could potentially be an unnecessary web scraper. And I'll show you an actual example of a script that I wrote that was completely unnecessary. So when I was first learning to web scrape, I wanted to gather data on my Stack Overflow reputation, and I'll show you what I did. So this is my Stack Overflow profile, and you can see that all the reputation changes are listed here, right? So using Selenium, it should be obvious to you that we could figure out some sort of way to expand out all these days and grab the reputation change and the date and store all that information and then go to the next page, go through it again, store all that information and, and repeat that until we hit the very last date. And since we know how to web scrape, you're already probably imagining how to do that, right? But what people frequently do, and this is an actual example of what I did, is that once you notice that and you can recognize that, you might potentially just immediately launch into to writing your script, right? But that could be an unnecessary amount of effort because in all likelihood, there are probably easier and more efficient ways to gather the data. And had I done a bit of extra research, I could have realized that instead of actually having to write a scraper to get all the reputation data, I could simply go to this page. And all the data I want is readily available. Here I have the date, the reputation change, the total reputation, date, reputation change, total reputation for all the days, right? So I wouldn't even have to go through different pages like I did in the scraper. And so this is a simple example, but it just goes to show that often there are easier and simpler ways to get the data that you might be otherwise thinking you have to scrape and parse the HTML for. So this video has just been a short cautionary tale about not necessarily writing web scrapers when there are probably more elegant and more robust methods that you can use and, and still get the same data in the end. So I just want to emphasize that now that you know how to web scrape, that doesn't mean it's going to be the only solution available to you.